Hello everyone, and welcome back. I'm DJR. This is the Talos Principles Road to Ginner. Last episode, I solved this puzzle. I spent some time trying to figure out uh, if it was possible to get some an object of some description, preferably a connector, um, out of this puzzle and into another one. I couldn't see any way of doing that, um, but I did pick up the star. So that was good. And I said I was going to read this terminal, so here we go. What have we got? Submissions still open. I don't know about you guys, but all this craziness recently makes me want to write more than ever. Just a reminder that provided your status is high enough, you can still submit original works for review, and I for one will still be reading. Even if you've never made anything before, in fact, especially if you haven't, now's the time. Don't forget Lil Lilith and Mr. Mulsaba developed a tutorial to help. This looks... Uh, adjusting library parameters. Looks familiar. Welcome to the story creation tool. Since this is, your, this is your first project, this tutorial will help you help guide you through the process. According to some ISBN number, all stories begin with characters of one kind or another. Therefore, to finish a story, you simply need to understand your characters, and the plot will proceed logically from there. This season's theme is Bildung's Roman. Okay. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Close your eyes. You see before you a human of remarkable qualities. Is it a boy, a girl, or someone else? Ah, uh, who knows? Someone else. Good. A character's sex helps determine the sorts of challenges and opportunities they might encounter in your story as well as how other characters will perceive them. Now, imagine your character is a little older and experiencing real triumph for the first time. What are they doing? A little older. Uh, demonstrating certain physical prowess. Something these ancient ideas failed to capture. Succeeding in an intellectual challenge. Everything better than everyone else all the time. Um, hmm. Let's go intellectual. Understood. Your character's natural aptitude is determined by the sum of their genetic and experiential influences. What sort of an upbringing did your character have? I didn't even know I was writing a story. Um, oh, I don't know. Let's go this one. According to extensive studies, studies of the genre and of ancient records, social advantage is generally sufficient to offset genetic disadvantage. Genetic advantage will only work will only sometimes offset social disadvantage. In other words, your character's background will have a radical effect on how they think about themselves and the nature of the problems they face in life. Are you sure you want your character to have that kind of background? I don't know. Now imagine your character has reached adulthood. 87% of Bildung's Roman records Commence with an emotional blow for the protagonist. What will your character suffer? What is this Bildung's Roman? I feel like that's rather important. Uh, I'm playing to debt. Injury. 
sounding quite dramatic already. You sure about that? A character is like an equation. Settle on the opening premises and the conclusion will work itself out. Non specific sex, intellectually gifted, low wealth background, caring family, suffered a serious in injury. Actually, I know who that sounds like. Locking story premises, generating outcomes, displaying your first draft. To begin with my to begin my life with the beginning of my life, I was born at 3 a.m. on a Wednesday. Fiscally deprived childhood. Oh I see, okay. My father, as he is always careful to point out, is only able to report the midwife's account. Seeing how he was pulling a long shift at the nearby textiles mill to pay for a second hand cot. My childhood was, in retrospect, a difficult period. I, f I found that although my fellows all had a wide variety of different physical appearances and appendages with varying levels of function, they nonetheless identified a resemblance and bond between themselves which was to my eyes all but invisible. My parents, aware of my particular situation, had the good foresight to provide me a name ambiguous in matters of sex, and I have continued in that vein ever since. My story became worthy of note as I approached the age of 18. I'm not sure that's actually what I was going for. Um, I'm not sure what I was going for, but perhaps non-human. I don't know. Anyway, um, your character suffers a personal injury. It is true that people are sculpted both by their nature and by what befalls them. And in my case, it may be more true than most. The person that I am today is defined by what has been taken away from the person I was. I lost my left leg in a fairground accident. The ferris wheel unexpectedly reversed and it was snapped between my carriage and the platform's edge. It being the leg, I guess. Um, okay. Oh, blimey. At that time, in that place, it wasn't a death sentence to receive such an injury, but it was a serious impediment. Owing to some legal wrangling between the fair owners and the state, I found that no party was terribly willing to cover my surgical expenses, let alone the cost of a fully functional prosthetic. Over time I learnt to be quite proficient at balancing on one leg, and resolved to find a way to support myself both financially as well as physically. I worked for a time doing various kinds of performance on the street, but soon the more seasoned cripples learnt to outdo my tricks and I was edged out of the competition. My story ran downhill from there. I will not tell you from where I write these words for fear of permanently scarring you. Though I have by every measure failed in life thus far, I am convinced my tale holds an important lesson. Be fit for purpose, accept your place. We are owned by others from the moment we take, first take breath to long after we die. Make of it whatever you can. I certainly did not. Um. Wow. Don't think much of that. But I don't particularly want to go through it again, so I'm just going to publish it. Uh, remember to check the relevant billboard thread in future to see how your story was received by the users. I'm assuming that just publishing anything at all, I'm hoping. It's going to increase my. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, in increase my profile status. So apparently, I'm now a visionary. That's good. I didn't know there was anything restricted to level nine. This is just. Okay. 
good to see you joining in, Uriel. What a read. I'm not convinced this narrative is extensive enough to truly qualify as build buildings Roman. Four out of ten. Yeah, whatever. I've been digging through the files that Garrett unearthed in his latest escape attempt. Here's an interesting bit of text that I found by Alexandra Drennan's favourite philosopher, Stratton of Stagiria. Stratton of Stagiria was mentioned a few times, I think, in the original, in the main game. It is neither necessary nor logical to denounce all virtues merely because one is confronted with the inevitability of one's own death. Beauty does not cease to exist because one is no longer beautiful. Lovers may die, but love itself cannot. The laws of the cosmos are not altered by the passing of generations. Knowledge may be lost, but not truth. When Exodus of Snidus perished, the planets did not fall from the sky. It's not Exodus. Eudoxus. Nor did levers cease to work when Ar Architas breathed his last. If then we are truly dedicated to those virtues and not to our self-important ego, we can take comfort in knowing that all that all that we struggled for endures. I hate getting names wrong. And I have no idea how to pronounce something. I guess I just have to do the best I can. Thank you so much for posting this. Can you send me a copy of those files? Of course, I'll do so right away. I find it hard to maintain entirely so detached a point of view, though I think the sentiment is excellent. Stratton is certainly an inspiration. He always makes me question myself and my point of view. Which I believe is profoundly necessary. I realise I'm bumping a very old thread here, but I felt this quotation was relevant to our situation. I hope it helps. I think it's helped me. Wow. As a critic, I always believed that being as ruthless as possible was the only way to improve art. I thought clear criticism, unencumbered by politeness, was the best thing I could contribute to our society. After all, without that, how can artists grow? Criticism that minces its words is a waste of space. And I still think that's true. But as we approach the end, or transformation, of Genna, I wonder if I haven't been entirely too unkind. Have I reveled too much in my role as critic? Have I been sarcastic and unkind? No, have I been sarcastic and crude when I thought I was witty? Was my defence of proper grammar ultimately just an, in an attempt to impose a sense of order on a world I couldn't control? Maybe, I don't know. But I do know I appreciated every work of art that I encountered. I didn't like all of them, that's true. But please understand that without them, I would have gone mad. Talking about your work, assessing its strengths and weaknesses, gave me something to hold on to. It gave me a purpose, a function in Genna. Every new story was like a little bit of salvation. For that I am more grateful than you will ever know, and I apologise if I ever caused any of you to feel less motivated to keep creating. I will never forget your devastating deconstruction of episode 24, but I do think it helped me in the long run to be a better writer. Your feedback for each issue of Incredible Stories was greatly appreciated. Hey, the mean reviews were the best. So, 6 out of 10. <laughs> okay, so we seem to be done here. So, uh, let's move on. 
I don't know how my um, thing seems to have left the screen, so I don't know how long this recording has been going. Probably only about 10 minutes, I guess. Wondering if that small island is the way to get something um, to the other puzzle, which is now behind me. Over there. It would be a heck of a long flight if it was. Okay, so that's obviously how we get back to the mainland. Oh, there's a star down there. Interesting. <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> That's a bit far to jump. Okay, well, I'll take it. Can I just jump down there? What's the point of being able to jump over here? Unless there's something worth jumping for. That's <laughs> oh, part of the tree. Um, I'm tempted to take a run up and see if I can jump that. I doubt I can, it's a very long way. But sometimes you just gotta try. Obviously not. Okay, so um This way. Oh there's a QR code there, I missed that before. Yeah, without creative, independently thinking and judging personalities, the upward development of society is as unthinkable as the development of the individual personality without the nourishing soil of the community. You know, something's just occurred to me. Who's leaving these QR codes here? The other characters are supposedly prisoners, and I'm supposed to be the first one to freely roam these lands. So I ask again, who's leaving these QR codes everywhere? I'm guessing that will take me to the star. So, probably need to break something out. And it could be pretty much anything. Well, I guess we go in the puzzle and take a look. Did I read this QR code? These three activities then, intelligence, love and creative action, which are so closely involved in one another, I cannot but feel to be intrinsically good. They form the distinctive distinctively human kind of behaviour. If you say so. Air delivery. That sounds like it's going to have a lot of fans. Oh! I've never seen that before. Blue and purple fields. Interesting. Yeah, it's just going to be a lot of fans, isn't it? That's probably not helpful. 
faccia. What's this called again? Aerial delivery. Air delivery, close enough. Yeah, it probably means I need to send something. Oh, I thought it was going to land alongside that blue field. Okay. That worked. <laughs> Brilliant. I like it. Okay, uh, no, that's not helpful. That's more like it. And what, this just throws me over the fence to victory, does it? Blacksmith, off you go, you're free. Okay, um, how on earth am I going to break anything out of this puzzle? Well, especially now it's all trapped. decided to freeze just as I was in mid-flight, so I didn't get to see what might have been useful to be able to save it number one. Um, I don't 
comparing that there's any use at all. So let's just bring everything out. Ow! Oh, can't get the jammer out. But that might not be a major problem. Question is, what, where do I put this box? In order to jump over the wall with a with a fan. these windows even here? Maybe in case it's not obvious that you can jam through the purple field? anything useful. Um, I don't know. stand on top of it. Interesting. me off. Oh! Can't I? Why can't I have my box back? Why would I be able to get up here if I then can't get up here? Really? Thank you. 
Would you stop beeping, please? Thank you. I must remember that I didn't actually look at that. Although I assume it'll all still be there. Even if I went and solved another puzzle anyway. Hmm. If there's a way to get up here, I'm not seeing it. Maybe let me just put the box a bit closer. Oh, what's happened? Don't do that to me. No, it's crashed. Oh well, I guess that'll be the end of the episode then. Um, on account of it's crashed. Has OBS crashed as well? I think it has. So I can't stop the recording. It's probably gone. Um, or it's still going. I don't know. If it's still going, I'll see you next time. If it's not still going, well, you won't hear me. So it doesn't matter. Bye.